Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the lecture series on advanced business decision support systems. I am Dr. Prabhul Pratap Singh from IIT Kanpur and we are learning to create decision support systems. And today we are finally going to develop our own completely working web based decision support systems. So till now we have covered fundamentals of python like variable statements different kinds of data types and all these things then in the last lecture we have gone through the modules like how to create a module and then import it to a different module and we have also seen a scientific library named as numpy and we have used this library to generate pseudo random numbers right so today we will start by creating our own decision support system which is available on our browser so we will start by developing a basic dss system so our main motive today is to create this system not to see how complex the task we can perform using this system so the decision model which we will be using today is very basic decision model is basic but the learning task today is to create the system right so what is the task today the task is to create a dss that can generate generate random number between 1 and 100 then it should decide whether the number generated is less than 50 or not and if it is 50 then it should perform the cube of that number cube of the number and if it is greater than 50 then it should compute the square of the number now these are the decisions that we are making here and these are the computations that we are performing so these decisions and computations will become more complex in the real life scenario but the development of a system around these decisions and these computations remains the same so this is the task and to develop the system around this decision task we will use a new library which is flask so flask is a micro framework available in python libraries and we will first install it in install flask in our environment then we will try to initialize our flask app so from here we will start coding in our python script and then the first task is to initialize our flask app we will see how we can do it and then we will try to create a function that will act as a root of our 
वेब बेस्ड डी एस एस सो वी विल सी वॉट इज़ द रूट ऑफ अवर वेब बेस्ड डी एस एस वैन वी स्टार्ट कोडिंग टूडे आफ्टर दैट वी विल ऑल्सो ट्राई टू क्रिएट अ मेन फंक्शन इन साइड our python script so this main function will act similar to what we have the main function in our c or c++ code so these kinds of function they will ask the interpreter to start the execution from this function and whatever you write in this function the interpreter will start executing the statements and then we will also see how to use templates these are html templates inside our dss system and how to use static files static files are your javascript or style sheets like css files how to use these static files inside our dss system so how to generate and code these static files we have already seen in our previous basic decision support system course available on nptel and today we will start coding and using those static files to modify our decision support system the last thing is we will also use numpy because our task is to generate these random numbers so we have to use this library to generate pseudo random number right so let us start by opening our integrated development environment that is ide so this is my code directory which is blank now let me open this with visual studio code so as a customary thing we will first create our environment for today for this project of creating our basic decision support system so you can see here that the environment is created now we need to activate this so it is active now you can see here that this is the environment which our command prompt will use from now now today we need to different external libraries from the python extensive python library ecosystem which is the numpy which we already installed in our last lecture also so to install this it again we will write the same command python hyphen m pip install numpy this will install the numpy and the main package for today that is flask we need to install that package as well okay so now it is installed now we can start writing our code today so the very first thing is to import a module that we need today which is numpy and we are using it using an alias called np the next thing which we want to use today is flask so we are importing we can import flask like this also import flask or a, the better way which we discussed last time is if we just want to use a particular function from a 
external library then we can directly uh, name that function and import it so from flask we need to import only the flask function right so we have completed our imports and now we need to initialize dss application so let us initialize a variable name app and in that we can initialize our main application by using the flask function which we have just imported and then here we are writing something which we have not yet discussed this is the predefined named variable which is available in all the python scripts we write so what this statement is telling is that in the flask function send the argument of whatever the value of name is send that value as an argument to this function flask right so it will by default complete all the basic necessary things that this flask application needs like setting up the name setting up the directory and all those things so it will set this directory as its source path right the next thing is to create a main function which will route our web decision support system to the home page so in summary we are actually creating the home page by defining this function so let us write the name of this function as home without any arguments and let us provide a doc string which says home page of the dss so let the let it return only a single statement so when this application will run this function is the root of the web based dss and what it will do is it will return this string so this string will get printed on the browser so we will see how it will happen but before that this is a simple function right now but to expand the capabilities of this function there is an advanced property in python which is known as decorators so what decorators do is they try to extend the capabilities of a particular function that you are giving them as input so in flask applications there are different decorators available in the library we are using a prebuilt decorator named as root so app dot root and argument we need to provide here is the actual url which you want the user to move to to find the output of this function so since this is the home page we will use only the slash operator so anybody who will just start this app will first move to this root directory and this root directory will return this string to the user right now this is all what our app can do till now but to run this app we have to also provide a main function here and this we can do by using if name so this is a special variable which we have already discussed and if name is equal to main so whenever you run your programs if you directly run a particular script then the value of this variable becomes this so if i am writing in my terminal that python dss dot py so this predefined underscore underscore name underscore underscore will automatically get the value of this one so if this happens then i am writing this conditional statement that whenever this happens i need to run app dot run with an argument debug is equal to true so we will see what all these things will do okay so the basic structure of our application is complete and we can run this file so the name of this file is dss.py 
so i i have already written here that python run python using python this file dss.py so let us see the output first so when i wrote python dss.py the flask library which we just installed it start computing what to do so the first output it gave is it is serving flask app dss then it showed that the debug mode is on what is debug mode i will tell you but also it is also giving this warning this is a development server so whatever we are doing this is not the actual production server that we are using here so flask identified this and it is giving this warning that do not use it in a production deployment so until unless our application is complete we will keep on working with this development server then it is saying that the app is running on this url so this is a local host at port 5000 so this is the default port but we can change the port if we want by changing by providing the port and the local domain name in this app dot run argument function right also it is telling that if you want to close this app then you can use control plus c to quit and then the debugger is active and a pin has been generated now we can copy this and let us see what it will show in our browser so you can see if i zoom it it is showing welcome to dss so the url is this one this is available on local host at port 5000 and this is the output of the complete application which we have wrote here now if you change this value welcome to the first dss and reload this page then you can see that it has been changed here but if you don't run this with debug is equal to true then it will not show this change until unless you restart your complete app so these are few things that debug is equal to true argument gives you as an added functionality also if you keep on writing your code and you get some error then this debug is equal to true will show you all the errors that the python interpreter can tell you at this page only right so this is the basic app and you can do anything on this dss application which you have learned in our previous course by using html css and javascript or other languages and now we will try to create the next version of the dss by performing this task which we have seen earlier that we need to generate a random number between 100 100 and then decide whether the number generated is less than 50 or not so let us start coding that again so to do that we first need to generate our random number so we have already imported our scientific library numpy with an alias of np so to generate a random integer we need to use np dot random dot rand int right and the low value is one high is hundred and step is one so we can skip that now let us store this generated random number into a variable name random underscore num now comes our decision model very basic decision model and to write that we will use our if statements so if random underscore num is less than equal to 50 so we need to do two task first let us write a variable string one and store that it is a that we are calculating the square and compute the square of this also so result is equal to we are storing the result in this and 
the okay so here we need to write the cube because the task was to calculate the cube if the number is less than equal to 50 and result should be random underscore num to the power of 3 so I am using the exponent operator here but what if this is not the case so let us write the else statement as well and we will write string 1 is equal to square and result equals random underscore num to power of 2 we can also print this result and we will see where this print statement will work because this print statement will not directly print the content to your browser that is your DSS so let us see what it will do now let us run this system again if I reload this nothing has changed right but you can see here that some number has been printed in here which is 9409 so what is this number so let us print this string also So let us reload it again and now you can see that a number is printed 5041 and it is showing that a square is this string inside str1 so that means the number was greater than 50 that is why this block of code was executed by the interpreter right but nothing is changing here why because we are not telling anything to the flask dss system that we need to change something here also so to do that either we can print these things using this statement or what we can do is we can create an html file and then try to expand our capabilities of our dss and then use the markup languages and provide the output in a neat form so to do that there is one more function available in this flask library which is called render underscore template now we have imported this as well but to render a template we first need to create a template so how to create a template you need to go to your source directory where this dss.py is available now create a new directory here that is new folder and write templates so your flask application will automatically understand that this is the directory for templates why because while initializing we wrote this variable as its argument so whatever is happening by default where this variable is playing its role so your flask application will look for this directory wherever this dss.py is available now in the templates directory you can create a new file and call it home.html and to write a basic structure of html you can write so this is the autocomplete feature available in this vs code environment and here we can write dss so this is the title of our web based dss and we can write here so now this is the structure of our home page right and 
to deliver this home page by this application we already imported this render template function now we have to use this render template function initially we were using this return statement but let me comment this so that we can see what we are changing now so let us write our new return statement by using that render template function and provide the first argument to this render template function as the name of that template so you don't need to provide the complete directory location and then the file location you only need to provide the home dot html that is the file name and now what this function will do is it will route all the contents of this function and whatever this function will return it will return it as a template in which template in the home.html template right so let us restart this actually we don't need to restart but it is best to restart since we have already used debug is equal to true so usually this development server will try to restart whenever there is some change or modification in this file so in the home.html template which is here we have written in our body section that write this welcome to dss string in center using the h1 tag so this is what happening here now in our dss system right so nothing else has changed only this string is coming up now how to add all these decision we are taking how to add all these things in our template so to do that we can send these variables to this template using this render template function and you can write any variable name here and store these variables which you want to transfer to your template using that so let me just use the same name so i need to transfer string one and what i need to transfer in it is this string value this str1 also i need to transfer this other variable that is result so and i am storing this into result so this orange part this is the variable name that is available in your template okay and this white colored variable this is the actual variable that is available in this script python script which we are printing here so whenever we try to use a print statement in this flask application it will print in our development server like this cube 21952 right otherwise if we want to print anything on our dss then we need to transfer that variable to our template using this method okay so now the application knows that we are transferring this but how to capture this in our template we need to add one more thing here so let us write a basic paragraph and say the operation performed was str1 the result is so now this is a new syntax which we have not discussed earlier because this is available only in the flask application so flask provides this templating engine known as jinja and this jinja templating engine can take the dynamic variables that we are transferring to our template and capture this using these punctuation marks so between two curly braces we can write the variable name that we are transferring from our script to our template okay so whatever the variable name we write here it will print the value that was transferred from this return statement so we have saved both the files now let us see how it will work so i am reloading the page now you can see that 
the operation performed by square and the result is 3844 as many times you reload the function will keep on running differently and will provide new output every time so now it is cube and it is 97366 similarly it has changed so it is working fine now our decision is happening correctly and our result is also getting printed on our dss system the next thing is how to use static files to beautify or to make the system useful for any user to understand easily so to do that until now let me summarize what we have done so we started with a blank script and imported our two main libraries that we need today then which was numpy and flask then from flask we imported two important functions that is this flask function and render template function after that we initialized our application using inside this app variable you can write anything here i am using this app now using this app variable we first created a basic function which we learned in our earlier lectures and in that function we initially returned a very basic string and saw that it was successfully printing that string on our dss right the next thing was that we developed our decision model which was to check whether a randomly generated number was less than or equal to 50 or not and based on that we performed a basic computation of cubing that number otherwise if it it was greater than 50 then we squared that number then we returned that computation and the this uh, string to the template so to use a template we first dev, uh, we first created our directory inside that directory we created our html file and provided that the name of that html file in this render template and further we also transferred our variables that was dynamically generated using the same render template function now the next thing is to create static files so to do that we need to create one new directory which is static and we can write here a new file named as style.css you can write any name here but the folder name should remain the same static the file name could be anything now let us create the complete structure of this home.html so to do that we have already created our header next is we will create a new element named div and give it a class which we have not yet initialized but we will do it in our style.css and name this class as container in this basic container we will create two more div the first is let us say having the class named left left container and the next div is having a class named right now we can populate the contents of this container as well so we can just inform the user what this dss is all about so that is our task so this dss will generate a random number between 1 and 100 it will check whether the number is less than 50 or not
if the number is less than equal to 50 then dss will compute a q of the number if the number is larger then dss will compute the square of the number right so this is the information that our dss will show now on the right section we will produce our output which is let us start a paragraph and write the random number generated is random underscore num and can also inform the user the operation on the number is num underscore op let us write result here so now we are trying to inform the user that the random number generated is inside this random num so we need to transfer this variable as well here so we can write random underscore num is equal to random underscore num also we need to tell this operation so we can write ops is equal to str1 and we can remove this because we are not using it anymore so now our render template will transfer the result variable random number variable and the operation we are performing right and we can remove these things because it is of no use now now let us run this once and see whether we are getting any error or not so now it is showing that this is this was the task and this is the random number generated is 27 and the cube on the number is 19683 so you can write cube of but it is still not styled well we have created our containers here like right or left but they are not showing any difference so we need to style these containers also so to do that we have already created this style.css and now we will write the definition of all these containers so as we have already discussed in our previous course that to style a class variable in css we need to start it with a dot operator so dot container and now let us write the css properties here so first we will start by using the display property with the flex value and add the justify content to it justify content and use the space around option after that we will also tell that the flex direction should be row and flex wrap should also be row the row gap between these containers should be 2 times rem value and the column gap 
should also be two times REM. All these values are dependent on the programmer and what type of display they want to show to their user. So I am just using, since we are just creating a very basic DSS, so I am just using very basic values. Align content and provide the value as center. Now our container is developed, but we have two more containers inside this container which was named as left and right. So for the left column, let us write the CSS properties. So let us say border is 2px dashed black padding is 2 rem align content is center for the right container which contains our the output of our decision model so let us change the background color for this as beach provide a border to this container 2px dashed trigger provide a border radius is 7px provide padding the same as the left container which is 2 rem and align all the content to center okay so our style is complete now let us rerun our code okay so we tried reloading our application but nothing changed even after uh, providing all the style why because we are not telling our template that we need to use a different style for this page so to do that we need to use this link argument here and we need to tell that it is a style sheet and the url for this is so if we are just using a basic web development system then we can provide the actual path here but since we are developing this system through a different library named as flask so we need to provide this dynamic location of this file so to do that anything dynamic we are performing in our template we need to use the jinjan templating syntax right so we will use these curly braces and write this new function url underscore for which is available in flask applications and we write that the name of our style sheet is we are performing the name of the style sheet and the location inside this url underscore for function the directory under which this is placed is the static and the file name is the style.css now let us run this again and reload the page so now you can see that our system has changed now it is neatly showing that this was our task that this TSS will generate a random number between 1 and 100. So when we loaded this page, the current random number generated is 3 and the cube of the number is 27. If we reload it again, it will keep on reloading the style on the template and your decision models output. So let us reload it again. So now it is 10,000, now 24. 91 so 
now you can see here that when the number is greater than 50 then this text is also changing so now it is showing that the square of the number is this if we let us reload it again now since it is less than 50 so the number is 35 and the text is the cube of the number is this so we can manipulate anything on this system right and now this is the root web page because we are writing this so if you write google.com now this is the base url of this but we can also write about here also or any other url that is available inside this website right so we can also perform this operation in our dss as well so to do that we need to add one new function here like this let us say we are writing def about so we are creating a new function for our about page and the doc string should tell programmer that this page presents the information about the DSS and let us return only a single string as earlier which is about page and to route this we need to create app dot route and here the url should change from slash to about slash right now we have two pages in our complete dss so let us see since uh, debug mode has already reloaded this so let us go to a new page now you can see that this is the new page available on the same url that is localhost at the port 5000 and here you can add any information which you want to write about this about page and if you just remove this then your actual dss is also available here okay so this way you can create your own dcn support systems and in the next few lectures we will try to develop a complete dcn support systems for inventory systems and other decision trees which was already discussed by professor philip in this course and we will try to see how to manipulate and tweak our code to get some significant insights from our decision support systems. So we will meet in the next lecture. Thank you.